Hello everyone and welcome to your 56th Cocoa Programming Tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to be covering how we can work with inserting items into our table view from other sources. So for example dragging from the finder or from iPhoto and dropping into our NS table view. So uh, this will be I think the second out of four, that's my plan anyway, four total uh, drag and drop tutorials. Uh, this one we're just going to kind of be introducing the drag and drop and uh, or the dragging into aspect because there's a lot uh, of code to write and uh, you know I gotta condense these into somewhat understandable chunks. So let's uh, talk about what the final application is going to look like. So this is essentially what uh, the final app will look like when it's done and uh, this is what we're going to be designing for this part of the tutorial. So in the finder here we have four different items. Uh, three of them are images and one of them is just a random file. Now if I drag these four items you'll see that four items get thrown into the dragging pasteboard and uh, that's what the finder does. Then our part on the table view is handled once we drag into. So you'll notice that the, something happens as we do this. We went from four items to three items one of them disappeared, the file disappeared, and we're left with the three images. And those images are converted into what looks like, you know, rows for the table view. So this is all done by, you know, the actual table view itself. And uh, so, you know, it's, uh, it's part of what we have to implement. So our job essentially is two things for the table view. We have to validate the drop, which is the first part. So validating the drop essentially means that when you drag things on, will it accept the drop? And so you have to look at what you have, whether you have image components, whether you have actually acceptable data. And if you do, then you'll accept it by doing some kind of drop or drag operation. So in this case, we're copying these images. If, however, I was just dragging the file, for example, you'll notice that there is no drag operation being done. So the, you know, the validation of the item is that we will perform no drag operation. Um, same thing for other things. Basically, as long as they're images, they will be accepted. If they're not, then we got to kick them out. And then the other part that we're implementing is this animation part. So how we get from what the finder gave us right to the in the pasteboard data into those nice animated uh, things that look like rows. So that is our job for this tutorial and uh, that's all we're actually going to cover. So we're actually not going to get into dropping anything in this tutorial but uh, you'll understand why. So let's start off with our app delegate section here. Inside application did finish launching we have to first tell our table view that we want to accept drags. So to do this, we have to say register for drag types and we pass in an array of objects that we are going to accept. And what we're going to accept are k ut type file URLs. And then we're good to go. So that means that any file URL that's dragged onto the table view, the table view will then go through the process of looking at it. So any view that ever looks at anything has to go through this process. You have to tell any view that ever wants to be registered for a drag that you register for drags. So the table view is no exception. All right, so the other important part is uh, when we have the desktop entity objects. So when we're dragging these things, they are stored in pasteboard information. And we need some way to read the pasteboard information into our desktop entity. So we need to be able to create desktop entity objects from the pasteboard. And to do this, we need to implement the NS pasteboard reading protocol. So writing is when you send stuff to the pasteboard and reading is obviously when you read from the pasteboard. So I'm just going to make a little pragma mark there for code readability. And uh, then we can implement some methods. So readable types for pasteboard is uh, the first method we're going to implement. And all this one does is uh, we return an array, or an NS array, of types that we'll accept. So in our case, we're going to accept two types. First, the type folder, and then the KT type. Oh, sorry, I'm misspelling. KUT type file URL. 
All right, so there's no actual way of specifying file URLs. Uh, there's a way of specifying files, but that's a little bit different. Uh, file URLs, if you start moving a URL around, the pasteboard really doesn't know about what's on the URL unless we ask it directly. So uh, it will store these different types in the pasteboard. And if you want to look more in depth on what the different types are, you can command click and see what's inside them. The reason we're typecasting those as ID is because they are core foundation objects. They're not actually Objective-C objects. And so we have to uh, typecast those as Objective-C objects. All right, um, the next method that we need to do is reading options for type. Now, this is basically, I'm just taking this right from uh, Apple's example in Table View Playground. If I was to implement this on my own, I would have assumed that we could just send this to NSURL because NSURL implements the NS Pasteboard reading protocol. So I assume that we could just send this to NSURL, but Apple do, did it uh, this particular way in their examples. So I'll just do it that way. It has to do with how uh, the pasteboard information is read, um, but I couldn't really tell you much more than that, unfortunately. All right, um, the last method is uh, the easiest one to understand probably. It's the actual initializer. So when we're reading the information from the pasteboard and we have to create a desktop object, that's every time you use an init, you're always creating an object. And this is no different. We're initializing our new desktop entity, whatever that will end up being. So to start out, we're gonna get the NSURL or the URL that's on the pasteboard. And because, like I was just saying, NSURL implements the NS Pasteboard reading protocol, it implements this method as well. So we're basically just creating a URL from the property list or the pasteboard information. And uh, then we have the URL. So then once we have the URL, we just have to create ourselves. And we can do this using that handy uh, class method that we made in the previous tutorials for making new entity objects. So we just pass in the URL and we're good to go. So again, entity for URL is that method we made over here. And uh, it simply creates either an image entity or a folder entity. All right, and then we just assign that to self and return self. Now you probably really don't have to assign this to self. You could probably just return it, um, but I'm just going to do that because it's an initializer and I don't know, I guess it looks good. Anyway, um, if this isn't the way Apple did it, that's why I'm uh, questioning what I'm doing here, but I think it's fine. So um, you can check out, again, the table view playground example that Apple has if you want to see how they did it. All right, um, with that being said, now we're coming back to actually the table view part, right? We've got our model data set up to read stuff from the pasteboard. Now we actually have to implement the drag and drop part for the table view. So. The table view drag and drop stuff is in the data source protocol. So if we look in here, we can see drag and drop and there's a bunch of different methods that we might look at. So accept drop is one, validate drop, update dragging items for drag. These two in particular we're going to be using in this tutorial and we'll use uh, these ones later as well. Not in this one, but anyway, we'll use a bunch of them and uh, it's nice to know where they come from. So uh, with that being said, now we have to start writing them. So the first one we're going to use is actually this one right here, table view, validate, drop, propose row, propose drop operation. So this is just saying that we're checking a specific row or the proposed row for if it can do this specific drop operation. And a drop operation, I'll show you what that is in just a second. So just for the sake of uh, demonstration, you can just return for now ns drag operation copy and we'll go ahead and run our application and see what this does so if i minimize my thing here and i go to drag some stuff you can see that there's a few different things that are happening right that weren't happening on our final application so you can see that the images can be dropped in two different locations either on the vi the view or the cell whatever you want to call it or you can uh, drop it above which is basically in between the different uh, views. So those are your two options. Those are known as the NS table view drop operations. So now that you know what that is, um, basically that's what this parameter is. So it's telling us whether it's trying to drop it on or drop it above. Now in our case, we don't actually want to have anything being dropped on. So 
we're only really concerned about the drop operation NS table view drop above. If it's anything else, aka drop on, then we don't want to have any drag operations, so we'll just say NS drag operation none. All right, so now that we know that what we're going to be validating is an operation that's between the different rows or NS table view drop above, now we want to test where this drag is coming from. We can get all this information from this info. Uh, info parameter that's passed in. Now all this is uh, thanks to the NS dragging info protocol. So basically we're past some object, we don't really care what it is, but it, it uh, adheres to or conf conforms to the NS dragging info protocol. And on this protocol there's tons of useful methods for understanding uh, what we're dragging around. So we can get the pasteboard object that's dragging, or that you know contains the information. The dragging source is where we're being dragged from. Dragging source operation is what kind of operation we're performing from the drag source. Um, I'll talk. I mean, a bunch of these we'll talk about as we go. We'll we'll pretty much visit almost every single one of these. So um, that's that's that. So it's a useful useful thing to look at if you want to keep that open. So we want to ask the info for its dragging source. If the dragging source is the table view, then we know that we're doing a reorder, right? If we're dragging something and the source of that drag is from the table view, that means we're trying to reorder our items if we're dropping it back in the table view. So we'll just say for now, reorder, uh, implement later or something. And we'll come back to implementing that when you know we're in another tutorial. All right, so for now, we want to check the condition when we're actually dropping stuff from outside of the table view, right? This, we're, our source isn't the table view, so we're coming from somewhere else, like the finder or iPhoto. So uh, the thing that we want to do now is figure out whether we have a valid URL. This is where we check for that. So we're going to make two little convenience, uh, well, they're just little private methods that we can use to check uh, to see if this is an image URL. So we're going to just make a little method called contains acceptable. URLs from pasteboard and we're going to pass in a NS pasteboard object. All right. So once we have that, there's a useful method on the pasteboard or in the NS pasteboard class called uh, let's see can yeah, can read object for classes options. And you can, again, all this stuff you can always find in the documentation. I always stress that a lot, but I can't stress it enough. Um, so what this is doing is basically going to try to read the pasteboard and see if it can create specific objects with, ever, with these classes that we pass to it. And so it takes an array of the different classes, but we want to see if we can create an NSURL, right? And considering we're only accepting file URLs, we should be able to make an NSURL class. So that's almost a given, but I mean, it doesn't matter. Even if it couldn't for some theoretical reason, then uh, it doesn't matter. But the whole point of this is to see if basically it can read the data from the pasteboard, put it into an NSURL class, and with that in mind, if this next uh, option here for options is what kind of uh, reading reading options it has. So this is where we can actually inspect the URL to see if it's an image. So for this we're actually going to make it a separate method and we're actually going to use this one again later so it's worth making a method for it. So NS dictionary uh, this is going to be our pasteboard reading options and this just returns an NS dictionary with two keys. So if we actually inspect this method a little bit we can see that there's pasteboard reading options and it didn't scroll to it but if I scroll all the way down you'll see that the pasteboard reading options are uh, these two so there's this this one here and this one here and you can read more about those if you want to but uh, I'm just gonna continue talking so the um, the first uh, key that we're gonna uh, put some object to is the NS URL or NS pasteboard URL reading file URL it, file URLs only key. Try to say that five times fast. Um, so what this key is basically saying is it wants a bool value of either yes or no, obviously, and uh, it will 
basically say, are we only reading file URLs on this URL, right? URL reading file URLs only key. So if we're only reading file URLs, then we want to say yes. Then uh, once we've established that fact, the other key that we can use is the NSP board URL reading content conforms to product types. Okay, I'm not going to try types key. Then uh, you can uh, this uh, key here is to understand what the URL actually conforms to for specific types. This is where we can address those image types. So we can pass in an array of all the different types that we're trying to conform to, and we want to conform to all the image types on the images. So that's what this key does. We just pass an array of uh, all the types that we want to conform to, and then that will be uh, passed back. So when we call this and we get the dictionary for all this stuff, what's going to happen is the pasteboard looks at uh, what's in it and it checks to see if the URL is, uh, well, if it can create a URL first and then if the URL conforms to these image types. So then when all that's done, it will return a yes if it can happen and or if it can and no if it can't. All right, back to the normal code here. Uh, we can now call those little methods that we just made. So contains acceptable URLs for pasteboard. To pass in the pasteboard, we again look at that info. Again, I can't stress this enough, but the info, this info uh, parameter is probably one of the use mo most useful ones you'll run into here. But the info has a dragging pasteboard method, and that contains the pasteboard that holds our dragging data. So that uh, goes through the process, figures out if it has images. If it does, then we want to do this. So we want to say that the info animates to destination. And you'll notice that this doesn't autocomplete for me, but it is indeed a property. So if you look it up in the documentation, it is there, but uh, it doesn't seem to complete the properties on it for some reason for me, but uh, maybe it will for you. So what this property does is it means it will animate whatever is being dragged around to its final destination. So if uh, we let go of it, then if we set this to yes, it means it will animate into you know where its final spot is. If it's uh, no, then it'll just jump right there. So we would like to like it to animate though because we're accepting it into the table view. And when all that's said and done, we have to specify, of course, what kind of drag operation we're doing. You always have to do that in this method because that is the point of this validate drop method. So once we've established that fact, we know that we're going to be copying these images into the table view. All right, awesome. So we're good to go. The next part is the last method we're going to cover for the day. And this one is updating. Let me see if I can find this. So update dragging items for drag. This method here is used to reorder the items that we're holding on to. So let's just see where we are in this tutorial so far so that you have a, have a clue of what's going on. So again, if I have my images, right, and I take these, and I drag them, you'll notice that nothing's reordered, right? The only thing we've established so far is that we can actually copy these things, and that's really all we've established. However, we haven't established the fact that that uh, file in the top left will, shouldn't be there, right? And that's what we're going to fix in this next method. We're going to fix the fact that the file uh, that's in the top left actually shouldn't be there, and uh, or shouldn't be, you know, displayed here. And then uh, it should reorganize these to look like rows. So that's what this next method is going to do, as well as change that number of files to three, if we were to run this. All right, so yep, that's uh, that's what we're doing. So let's begin. So what uh, we want to first check in this method is basically to see that uh, what we're doing is not part of the NS table view. So we want to make sure that the dragging info, again, that's the parameter for this NS dragging info, like I've said, very important parameter. So we want to make sure that the dragging info's dragging source is not the table view. And once we know that it's not the table view, then that means that we can actually look at, uh, what do I want to say? It means that it's coming from somewhere else. So uh, we will actually want to reorganize what these items look like. If it was just on, uh, if these items were simply on the 
geez, I'm, I'm, I'm losing my words for this tutorial, but uh, if, if the items are already on the NS table view itself, then we don't actually have to reorganize them because they already look like cells. You only have to reorganize them if they're coming from somewhere else. So this is why we, we have to check or we can check to make sure that the table view isn't the table view or that we're not dragging from it. All right, uh, the next part is sort of a complicated part, I guess, but um, I'm just going to type it out and uh, you can follow along. So we want to make an array of all the different classes that we can hold on to, so, or that we're going to create, basically. So the first one is the desktop entity class. That's kind of obvious, I guess, right? Because we want to create a desktop entity object out of the things we're dragging. The other one that we're going to use is NS pasteboard. Um, what am I trying to say? NS pasteboard. Um, no, NS pasteboard item. That's the one I was looking for. And NS pasteboard items are just the generic items that the NS pasteboard holds on to. So basically, it, it's the fallback if uh, the desktop entity doesn't work. The reason we're going to be looking at NS pasteboard items is because we want to eliminate things that aren't NS pasteboard items. So if if they are, so if you ha if you have an item and it's uh, just a generic item like that file that we have. So that file, when we are dragging it over with the images, is not going to be a desktop entity. It's just going to be a generic NS pasteboard item. And we want to basically figure out if you know that one's there, we want to kick it out of the club, basically. So that's why we have to check uh, NS pasteboard items. And we'll see how that works in just a bit. All right, so now the next part is to create an NS table cell view. And this will act as that view that uh, these things will look like, right? Because that's what we're creating. So um, yeah, that's that. So NS table cell view, and then we want to say table cell view, and we'll create one from our table view. So table view make view with identifier, image view, or image cell rather, and then the owner will just say self. So this is just creating a table cell view like we usually do, you know, if we were run in this method down here, for example, which is where we create those views for the table. But in this example, we want to sort of set up the views. We want to have a table cell view so that we can figure out how to organize those images when we drag them onto the table view. All right, so now that we have that one out of the way, uh, the next parameter that we're going to use isn't obvious yet, but I'll, under, I'll explain it later on. So NS integer and valid count. So, and we want to set this to zero. That's actually important for when you specify things with blocks. But um, so we want to set this to zero. What this uh, valid count is going to do is we're as we go through, because we're actually going to look at all the different components on this drag, we have to identify which ones are valid objects, meaning whether they're images or not. If they're not images, like if they're the, that normal file, they're not part of the valid count. So we're basically going to keep, keep track of the number of valid objects that we have. And this all come back to why we need this in the end, but uh, that's that's that. Okay, um, so let's figure out the next part, which is the really fun one. So dragging info, there's this nice method, and it's probably, maybe the longest one you've seen yet. Enumerate dragging items with options. We're going to pass in zero for this because we don't actually care to change any of that. For view, this is the view that you're essentially working on, so that's our table view. Classes is that array that we made earlier, so all those classes, and I'll talk about why we passed that in as well. Search search options is only if you want to filter stuff out of uh, this enumeration, but we don't want to do that, so we want to pass in nil. And then we want to use this block. If you don't know what blocks are, um, then I highly suggest you check out my blocks tutorial. Um, they're all in the Objective C series, I think, but um, yeah, they're they're. You'll want to check that out before we before going to this because we're going to have another block at the end of this tutorial as well. So, what this method is doing is it's going to enumerate through all the dragging items from this dragging info object. So the dragging info object is like the big container of everything that's being dragged. So if we're dragging four items along, that's the dragging info object. The dragging items, which is this little guy right here, individual dragging items are represented by the little pieces that we're dragging. So each image, for example, would be its own dragging item. So if we're dragging uh, four different things along, and uh, we have our index here, this would be, uh, so like if we had just, just say we're dragging the three images, for example, the index of each one would be 0, 1, and 2. So we'd, that would be how we 
as we enumerate through these objects, the index would be changing. So if we're looking at the first object, then we're at index zero. The next one would be index one, etc. So that's that parameter. And the bool is if you want to stop the block, but uh, we won't have a use for that parameter. So I won't bother going into that. All right, so the first thing we want to check is to see if the dragging item, dragging item, dot item, and let me just explain the what's in the NS dragging item before I do this. So if we option click on this, NS dragging item has some useful uh, things that, well, useful things. So we have to set the dra the dragging frame of the, yeah, which is, I'm going to, I'm going to totally lose track of what I'm saying here, but NS dragging items, right, are the individual things. So we have to specify the frame, the size of the thing that uh, it's going to become. So when we are dragging those items onto the table view, right, when they have to resize into a specific frame, that's, that's where we specify this frame. So we have to specify the size of what the uh, th what it's going to look like. The image components are what is uh, contained for the images of this drag. So we have, for example, when we drag, uh, just take a single image, for example, if we drag an image onto the table view, there's two image components. There's the image itself, that little thumbnail, and there's also the text. So those two would be the image components that come onto uh, the drag. The last part, this item property, is the actual model object that's being created uh, by this when we enumerate through it. So that's that. Um, it, it should make a little more sense as we go through it. So if we have the dragging item here and we ask for its item property, this is the actual object that gets created because of the classes that we passed into it. So what we're going to test here to see is if is kind, goodness, I'm having trouble typing out today, is kind of class and we want to see if it's the desktop entity class. So what does this mean? It means that the class, so we pass in these array of classes, right? It'll try to make the first object first, then it'll try to make the next object. So first off, as it's enumerating through all the items it has, it'll say, all right, uh, I have my dragging item here, right? The first one, and it's going to try to create an object. It's going to try to first make the desktop entity object by using that NS pasteboard reading protocol that we implemented on the desktop entity. So when we're looking at this item, we're seeing, okay, did it create a desktop entity class item? If it did, then that means it's basically a valid object that we we're gonna we're gonna want to use, right? So that's good. That's what we're that's what we're looking for. So once we've established that fact, uh, we can now do a few things. So we can first create an object. So we'll say entity. And then we'll typecast this. So this isn't really creating, we're just typecasting what's already there, but we'll typecast the dragging item as a desktop entity object since we just tested to make sure it is one. So once we have that, uh, we'll use that in just a bit. Uh, the next thing we'll do is set the dragging items dragging frame. And the dragging frame we can get from the table cell views frame, not finalized frame, like so. So that again is specifying that size of the frame that that entity is going or the the dragging item is going to have in uh, the table view. So that's important. Um, the next part is to actually start creating uh, the what's known as the image components of the dragging item. So to do this, we have to take the dragging item and we'll use the image components provider property, which is actually a block. So I know another block, but uh, bear with. I'm sure. I'm sure you'll do all right. So to create a block, we can just say NS array like this because this block will return an NS array. That's why we put the NS array there. So that's what we're returning in this block. And uh, yeah, so we have to comp we have to return essentially the image components that we're going to use later on. So we want to figure out what kind of image components we have. So this depends on what the entity is. So we can say entity is kind of class, and we want to see if it's actually an image. So if it's an image entity, and in our case, it should always be an image entity class because really that's all that we accept from outside drags. But if you ever did later on accept things like uh, folder drops, for example, then you would, you would want to 
be sure that you're uh, you know an actual desktop image entity so now that we know that we can take the table cell view and set its image view so say set image and we'll take the entity and we'll ask it for its image now the entity right now is only a desktop object so we'll typecast it as a desktop image entity and of course we know that because we just checked for that all right so once we've got that we can continue on here and uh, that's the only thing that we really care about if it's a desktop image entity. The, the other important part though is to set up the table cell views text field so we want to say set string value on the text field and we can just say entity.name and that'll get that so the last part is of course to return the image components now how do we do that well the ns table cell view has a useful method on it called dragging image components and so because we're using ns table cell view it'll automatically understand based on the image view and the text field that it has it can return these dragging image components for us. So this is really useful, right? Because we can just call this method and it'll return the components. So we can say table, cell view, dragging image components. And again, these come from the fact that we just set the text field in the image view. If we didn't do that, then uh, you know it, would, it might be different. Okay, so now that we have that, um, we've created the image components and uh, we should do, you know should be good to go for that let me just check my notes to make sure if I actually cover everything in case you don't know I, I never actually use notes for tutorials but this one's just so long that I don't wanna, don't wanna blow it um, yeah I think that was pretty much everything I had to cover for that um, I'm gonna use this valid count uh, parameter later I'll, I'll talk about uh, you know why we need it uh, but we'll we'll test the application before we get to that point. Um, the other case that I want to uh, look at is if we're not a desktop entity object. So that means it was just something that couldn't be created as a desktop entity, which is aka anything that's not an image. So if it's a file object, then it will just be an NS pasteboard item. And so if this is the case, there's only one thing we want to do, which is set the dragging items image component provider to be nil. And the reason we do this is that this will uh, basically tell it that it should fade away when uh, it goes to run these. So after this method is called, basically all these dragging items are going to figure out their image components by the image components provider. If it's nil, then basically it's just going to fade away. So because it had no images, it's going to fade. And that's what we want to have happen. All right. Um, what else do we want? Um, I think that was it for that section. The I'll come back to the valid count like I was saying. Uh, another thing that we'll want to do though is set the dragging infos dragging... what is this one called? Formation I think. Again it doesn't auto-complete anything for me so I never know. Dragging info... oh I think I want the... Dra no, I want the dragging info. Okay, I don't know. I can't remember what it's called so I'll have to look it up. This is when you look up stuff in documentation. Oh yeah, never mind. It was called that. I just haven't set it yet, so it's still whining at me. Um, so the dragging formation, there's a bunch of different types we can have, which is NS dragging formation list. That's the one that we want. So basically, um, if I leave this as default, which is the default, I wouldn't actually have to set that. But if I leave it as that, you'll see what happens. So here's our finder window, and I go to drag stuff, and you'll see that basically these sort of get merged into uh, one little thing, which is, I don't know, I'm not sure what's even going on there. It's it's kind of doing something weird, but let's see if I move all these over. So you can see that they kind of get thrown into this really awkward, I don't even know what's going on with these, but it gets thrown into this sort of jumble that uh, I don't want. I want them to appear as a list uh, of images. So to allow that to happen, stop my application there, I can change the way the items form themselves. So I can set the formation to be a list. And what this does is allow me allows me to take these images and drag them over like this, and they'll be converted into a list like that. So that's a very nice. I mean, I think it looks better anyway. So they kind of form into this list that looks more like what they'll look like in the table view, right? 
The other thing you'll notice though that we haven't figured out yet is that the number stays the same. So we still have that four hanging out there, even though we're only dropping now three items in. So how do we fix that? Well, that's where that valid count uh, property comes in. So let me quit this and I'll uncomment out my valid count. Why is this not hiding? That's weird. Um, so I'll uncomment that out by putting the underscore underscore block parameter. This means that this, uh, this value will actually stick around outside of the block. So basically, uh, if I iterate, so um, where do I want to do this? I'm just trying to think. I want to do it right here. So valid count plus plus. This basically means that I'll be able to increment this value and it will stick around. So normally, if you don't have this underscore underscore block in front of a value, it's just going to be copied into the blocks, which means that if you increment something in the block, it's just nothing's going to happen to it. It's, it's just going to die, right? Because in the next run of the block, it's back to its original value. So if you want to make something basically exist outside of the scope of the block, then you'll want to use the underscore underscore block uh, syntax. All right, so what this does by adding the plus plus here means that anytime the dragging item is a desktop entity, the valid count will go up by one. If it's just something else, right, some normal other file, then it will not be incrementing on those. So we specify this number by saying number, oh, I never remember these, and I wish it would autocomplete for me, but it's not being nice. It's number of something. Number, yep, number of promised, no, that's not the one. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong object. Let's look at NS dragging item. Or no, I'm looking at the right object. I'm just jumping all over the place. Maybe I was on the right one, I just can't even pay attention. Uh, no, it was this one. So number of valid valid items for drop is the method I'm looking for. So number of valid items for drop gets, uh, I don't want to set to valid count. All right, so if I go ahead and run this, we should be able to see the fix. So hide this hide this and open this up again <laughs> all right there we go so now if I take all these files drag them over you can see that our count now decrements to three right because it's only it's only going to give us the number of valid items and uh, that's what we do so we specify that on the, the, the dragging info and it's properly updated when uh, that methods called Anyway, that's uh, all we get for uh, this tutorial. And as you can see, it took long enough to get to this point. So we'll stop there and uh, we'll talk about this other good stuff in upcoming tutorials. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave your questions in the comments below. I know it was a complicated section, but uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Anyway, see you next time.